So how do you feel about the Invocation Alistair hybrid decks and stuff with the Dogmatica and all? There's so many variants of it. I don't even know what to call it, but... Yeah, it's, well, it, it's really consistent. You know, it does the same thing pretty much every game, which is, you know, good. Uh, it summons Window, so it's got a really powerful Floodgate. Um, I think Nadir is one of the best cards in the game, for sure. Nadir uh, server, I think yeah, card's crazy. Yeah. I think it also has an almost some problem a bit though, because it's you know playing a bunch of Alistairs and field spells and searches and all that stuff. So I think it's got a little bit of an normal summon problem too. Uh, but I, I think it it's pretty consistent and it does something good consistently. So at least. that deck is interesting to me because when I first came back and McCabe uh, he started playing Yu-Gi-Oh again, so he was at the local and he was playing that deck with three Super Polys. Now this card is no stranger to you. Because you are the person who won a YCS with three super polys. And yeah, I remember playing one. I was like, okay, I'm play three. Yeah, I can't believe. And you sent me, it's crazy. The week of that YCS, or maybe two weeks before that YCS, you sent me your exact deck list. And I, I tested it with McCabe. He was playing Stellar Knights. And I, yep. for, I four owed him on Dueling Book or Dueling Network, whatever it was called back then. I four owed yep. him. And he said, this is bullshit. Like, it, jokingly, he was like, this is bullshit. I'm done. And he just, like, left the room. Like, he just <laughs> left. Like, I, I just, like, he had, like, the nab for back row. And I think one was the counter trap. Like, one was, like, call it a haunted or something. And I just, like, OD'd on him. I was just, like, draw phase anything. No, like, activate super poly. Like, get rid of your whole field. Like, you can't use your counter trap now. Uh, Dragon pop a back row. Like, when the, you know, everything. Just, like, the game just ended, basically. Like, construct comes out. Window comes out right behind it. And... For some strange reason, I fell into the trap for that Toronto YCS to like not play your deck list, the winning deck. I ended up playing like the fucking basic bitch version that had uh artifacts in it and like Sanctum, and that was like my light engine as opposed to using like Wyver Buster and the other baby, the four star, you know, the four star dragons. Um, that deck was really, really broken now. The one you made with the Shadals with three super poly and like the baby dragons and. I just remember, I don't know, like after, it's weird, after being eliminated from that YCS, I played side events and just scraped up the side events with the exact deck list because, like, people just couldn't deal. Uh, but how yeah. do you feel, how do you feel about Super Poly now in 2021? I still think it's it's the nuts. Yeah, and no one's playing it, though, I feel like. Oh, man, I, I like fusion cards, and I, I, I would play it if I were playing a fusion deck. Yeah, if yeah, I feel like the Alistair decks. I don't know if they side it. Maybe they side it, but I I just can't. They don't even side it, right? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, it's actually crazy. I I just can't imagine that we exist in a world where super polymerization is not a playable card, right, Kenny? Like uh, that card it is, is so broken. Let me, let me tell you what I did. So I played uh, at the virtual YCS. I played Despia, and like I liked the deck a lot. I think that it had some problems to to figure out still. But let me tell you one of the the things that Super Poly did by itself. Um, so my opponent went Protus, called Darks. I'm playing a dark deck. Yep. Um, he went uh, the Baron and the um, Chi Chow, and okay. then he set Infirm. And Jesus. all I did was I set a Despia monster and I played Super Poly and I Super Polyed away his um, his Protus. And the Chi Chow and summon the the big Despia that takes three. It takes a, a Despia, a light, and a dark. Uh -huh. um, and then it's 3,200 attack. So I attacked it with a Baron. Uh, and then its effect is quick play reborn during the main phase. So the oh main my. Phase used it to reborn the the baron he impermed it and then when he drew i reborned it anyway <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it was just like super probably beat that whole field and gave me a negate bit <laughs> oh my god <laughs> let me oh my god this brings up a good question overall because as i understand it pat you are both a deck scientist in terms of constructing decks and looking for like unique ways to build a deck or different meta calls but also, obviously, a great player and it can, um, the technical side of playing the game. Now, obviously, both are very important, but do you think either one is weighed a little harder? Do you think if somebody was learning how to play, obviously, you need to know how to do both, but do you think one is a little better, like if somebody's a better deck constructor or um, yeah, a think, better player? Yeah, I, I actually think deck building counts for a lot more. Uh, okay. And I, I don't really think it's close either. Um, because I think what, and I, I think I've seen this for some years now where if you have like really good technical players, um, they can top pretty consistently. 
uh, and maybe win one to two events. Uh, and then, but to really get a lot, like to get to get beyond that, really, um, I think the deck building has to be the advantage mm-hmm. because with technical play, like, you know, at the end of the day, like if we're playing the same deck and I'm sitting across from someone, if if I'm if I think I'm the best player in the tournament, whoever I'm sitting across from is still 80% as good as me. And so like the the difference across, you know, a 16 round tournament, like it's it's just not enough of an advantage. Mm. And so I feel like the only way to get enough of an advantage to to really win tournaments multiple times, uh, like a lot is to have a deck building advantage. And I don't think that technical play can really make up for that. That's cool. I agree. I agree with it hundred percent. I actually have something to say about that because so I existed at pretty much the dawn of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! Like oh five. I was around. I wasn't good. I was a kid. But yeah. I, I did play I in Go format. You said what? I was reading metagame by two thousand five. Same same. I was a heavy heavy on the metagame, heavy on like the Adam Corn following, the yeah. Emon Emon following, um, overdose, all of that stuff, the super friends, like Brent Yatter, all like all of that. I back then technical skill meant a lot because everyone was playing yeah. the same deck and the deck was very basic it was yep. a very so goat format which is why like now kenny when you when you guys watch me play or watch me observe like oh five goat format and like the formats that are closer to go so like the formats following it are also pretty much the same as far yeah. as like power level and just the decision making tree is so small yep. um so when you're when you when you observe me in those formats like I'm pretty godly because my technical skill has always been extremely good. Like I'm really good at spotting the correct play. I kind of know what people are doing. I know how to make reads. Then Yu-Gi-Oh shifted yep. to what Patrick is talking about. Cause there was a shift, right? There was 100%. a point where you didn't really have to know how to build a deck. Like the plant and agent deck were pretty much pre-built. I think that that middle period was the worst part of Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> yes. Yes. There was, there is a middle period, right? And deck building, like X Sabres and stuff like that, like it didn't really matter too much what you did with those decks. Like those decks just kind of built themselves. Um, but then a shift happened. And it's interesting because so like my I won with Gravekeepers, that's my one win. And that is because of the deck. Like the yeah. deck itself. I'd argue that pretty much anyone playing that deck could have won that YCS. In fact, the other two people playing that deck were second and third place. The creator of the deck, Sean McCabe, like also second place like the deck is that strong granted me and him are, we've always been technical players but sean always had the deck building eye and i i've never prided myself on being like a deck builder like that's just not my thing um i usually rely on my group to like help out with deck ideas and like bounce things off and like i'm good at knowing what's not good but yeah. i'm not good at putting together the whole 40 like i'm i can look at a deck list and say like that just you're doing you're trying to do two things you're trying to go first and second like what do you want to do here you're playing too many hand traps but you're also trying to break boards with like droplets and like all these other cards like you can't do both like which one are you really trying to do so yeah. like even now i don't play at all but people at my locals they still like ask me for advice and stuff like that and i'll look at their list and i'll say like you know you have to pick what you want to do like you can't do both i know that, i know that you hate losing when they set up a board i know you hate losing when you go first and they break your board but you you cannot possibly expect to just draw i want to draw the go second yeah it just doesn't work so i agree deck building has become so 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 weighted for uh, a second, it, it's so crazy at ycs too <laughs> you said what yeah no for, first second third i don't know if that's ever happened i don't um, not that i know of, no <laughs> yeah like like since then i don't know if any like group of people like a small group of people have gone to an event and just like like imagine you ben and zach all just like take or like you, Ben, and Desmond just take like first, second, third back in the day. Like that, w- <laughs> that would be insane, oh, right? Like great. that's just yeah. So it's funny because at that at that YCS Atlanta, you actually played one of the guys. Um, he did not top, but he had the deck. It, his name was Sushant. You played them round one. I'll never forget this because I walked up to the table, and he was resolving a lore of darkness. Okay. And you were just sitting there, like I think you were playing plants. Um. You were just, you know, chilling, like watching him play his turn out. And he he's resolving a Lord Darkness. He banishes uh, Gravekeeper's Commandant. And I think you said, like, that's not dark. And yeah. he was like, oh, shit. It's and not he dark. Discards his hand. I remember he, that. Yes, yeah. he discards <laughs> his entire hand. So he starts the game off with zero cards and he wins the game, though. Yeah. Which is, which is, <laughs> dog, do you understand how fucking absurd? Oh, 
crazy. That like, and I watched. I stood there and watched the game fall apart. Like he top deck like Grandkeeper Steel. He like plays and gets back Commandant, gets yep. back another guy, and then he just like gets Necro Valley on the board, and then it just gets out of hand because like Plants yep. just could not deal at all. It, like that was the beginning of where I would say like deck building started to really really show is like you need to build better um than everyone else in a room to have a real competitive advantage yeah. and it's weird because after that the game went into this weird period of like the 2011 is uh agents plants um uh, people playing like infernity and shit like that and those decks were just kind of like whatever like i don't think any of them really had an edge over the other too much uh i think that if we went back and played like 2011 we would all find out that there's only really one deck to yeah, play it really looked different i'm sure Oh, they like, look way different. All, all competitive like go decks now look way different. They that. look so yeah, different. Yeah, yeah they, they do. don't. It's the same not... thing, you know. When you go back, you you learn more. So yeah, yeah, it's just crazy. Like that deck, deck building is so weighted uh, in the equation, and it, it used to be like oh technical skill because we're both playing goats, right? Yeah. Like we're both end phase scapegoat, draw phase whatever, get back sinister serpent, then play metamorphosis, suck up your guy priority, all that. Like everyone knew how to do that at a point. So like, what's your advantage now? Like, yeah. do you expect to just be better than everyone across the table from you? Um, also we're in the age of like technology and dueling book and that yeah. didn't exist back then. So the average player, and I know you and I talked about this back in the day all the time, but the average player now is slightly. Hey guys, if you like this clip, we have full video versions of our podcast episodes available on the I am there Patreon, as well as exclusive content. If you'd like to listen to our full podcast episodes or find us on any other social media platforms, you can do so by clicking the link tree below.